Hey everybody, this is Brad Dyke reaching out to you and today I'm talking about my transitional model for TrueNAS and how I'm going to bring it over in a simple one, two, three step. This is a pretty cool little explanation. Um, it's going to be strictly explanation. There won't be any walkthroughs because of the nature of this transition is basically going to be a logical migration. So we're going to jump into it right now. Okay, so down here is an old Isilon chassis that I had and I had secured and it is a really great been a great chassis uh, it's a series 4 uh, 5400 which in truth is not actually an EMC product even it's an OEM product for EMC Super Midwest Micro I'm sorry not Super um, um, yeah Super Micro made this motherboard and this chassis design for EMC's requirements and basically it has a lot of discs in the front, 48 discs, a total and capacity, two bays. This is bay one, bay two, and there's another bay in the back. And then there's a subsequent bay, which is called a SSD SATA uh, SAS bridge card inside that has the boot OS on it. So this is the really cool thing about this design is lots and lots and lots and lots of hard drives. I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. Uh, but it's a powerhouse and it sucks a lot of juice and doesn't do it very well. Two 1400 watt power supplies means a hefty power, uh, a hefty power bill if I would let this run 24 7, which I can't do. So I use TrueNAS as a true secondary storage device. I power it up every six months, I out replicate data from my, re my reserve server, and then I power it back off. So what is my roadmap to accomplishing this transition? Well, there are two ways to do this. One, you can choose to do TrueNAS's uh, what's called transition paired clustering, where you bring a new chassis, like let's say, for instance, like this, seven, this 720 Dell here, into pairing with this guy, and you can replicate the data over, and then you can break the cluster pair and by doing that, you're going to be able to retire this chassis, but everything that you built and configured is in play. Now, normally I would say, okay, not a bad strategy, but that's not true. My, the truth of the matter is, when you do a logical cluster pairing, you transition the inheritances of the old to the new have to be careful about this because this is where you get in trouble specifically as in SMB transmissions and so on because the older chassis are running on like SMB1 SM, SMB1 while the newer operating environments are maybe broadcasting on SMB3 and what ends up happening is device interfaces fail so what is the actual you know the home lab guys best solution well my recommendation is as you can see here, I have a 720 here, that's my powerhouse, and I've got storage, and I've got capacity. Um, these are my SSDs, these are my 10,000 RPMs, these are my Dell High Performance, and basically that's the powerhouse. But over here, I have myself my Dell Power Edge uh, at 720, and I have a pair of larger but slower capacity disks that work in what we call tiered storage. So what I'm gonna do, opposed to what's known as legacy tier group uh, of disks, as I've got down here, which is basically two or three or four groups of disks, I'm gonna use tiered structured storage. So that means I'm gonna do a clean deployment of TrueNAS on this machine versus an inheritance installation from my legacy machine. So. By doing that, now I can just basically transfer from SharePoint to SharePoint. You can do that by two ways. One, you can do a push-pull between the two servers, which is perfectly fine. And it's actually the most efficient because there's a 10-gig pipe on this guy and there's a 10-gig pipe on this guy. Or what you can do is you can do a client transfer. Now, I, I actually lend toward the client transfer because if you do suck to suck, in other words, you just take what you got and move it over the fence, you've made a mistake. And that is you didn't review what you have. And if you didn't review what you had, you don't know what you've got. So how much of that is really storage you want to store versus what do you really need? 
In other words, vet your data. Make sure it's still data you want. Now, on this NAS is a very important set of, of folders and structures that have all of my family photos on it. Very, 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 very important. As a matter of fact, a whole block of disks are dedicated to that. So, yeah, I'm going to set up a client, and I'm going to vet what I want to go over to the new NAS head. Now, again, though, I'm still in a situation where if I just let this guy run permanently uh, 24-7... It's not going to meet my needs because that's not what I want. What do I want? I want this guy to be my ultimate redundant data storage capacity. That means it should not be running. Yep, you heard me say it right. Turn your NAS off. It's the ultimate defense from hacking. It's the ultimate defense of hardware failing. And, you know, turn it on three times a year. Pump up your data. Get it over the fence. Do what you got to do. But the end result is, it's the data is secured, it's powered off, the disks are not getting worn down, they're not wearing out. Unlike my other stuff over here, which is constantly running, and I'm always losing disks and so on and so on and so on, because, you know, they're, they're older disks and I buy them in bulk so I can get a, a cost-effective answer to my disk needs going forward. And with that being said, overall, the performance capacity uh, is exactly what I want to do. So... When you think of, of doing something like this and you've reinvented hardware that was used to be proprietary in nature, uh, like this Isilon was, and I basically broke it and I didn't do much with it. All I basically did was take all the EMC proprietary stuff out, left all the standard industry gear in it, booted it up off of a boot drive, and I began to find out how I could start using all of the capacities of this. You will lose, by the way, when you do this, if you, for instance, do what I did and buy an Isilon and install true NAS on it, you're going to lose certain functionalities like your touch control screen here, your display mod uh, here, and so on. Who cares? Not a big not a big loss. It's not painful. You know, it's like the, the dial power edge here, this, this 805. What if you can't use the LED display, but I still can do everything else? Great. No problem. You know, it doesn't have to be fully functional to do what you got to do. So with that being said, and you're dealing with NAS capacity, the other cool thing you can do when you're bringing in all your new stuff is you can add even more hardware to the equation over time. Um, and yeah, you can bring in literally legacy hardware. Here's a NetApp. Here's a HP 3PAR. Down here is an EMC fiber channel. Uh, you've got the interfaces, and you can get them cheap on the eBay. You can use them. Just remember, though, what I said about working with um, TrueNAS platforms and taking advantage of them. Um, TrueNAS can do hyper-thread, uh, but when you do that, that means you're going to have to have these up and running more consist consistently, so, so be ready for that cost. Uh, it is real, and it's not a joke. These things draw a lot of power. So with that being said, look at what you have, see what you can accomplish, Take old, transform it into new, and when your gear starts to show its wear and tear, uh, you can have some really great options going forward, and you can optimize your chassis. I did a video on the optimization of your chassis to get the power usage as down as, as low as possible. If you need to have those chassis up and running 24-7, 95% of the time, in most of test labs, you only need one decent box that can do everything that should be 24-7. Even could run a hyper-thread if you want to do binds or DNS services and things like that. But you know what? A Microsoft server box will do all of that as well as storage and several other things too. So usually just one chassis will be your critical, what we call OA server. You know, it's going to provide all of your automation and all your office needs for your daily use. Well, this is Brad Dyke signing off. I hope this helps some. It's fun to do this stuff. It's not difficult. Don't be scared. You can do it. Um, please keep enjoying, keep learning, and God bless.